Okay, I guess at this point we could probably start the interview since we're going to talk about the importance. We're going to talk about all of this stuff anyway, but just a quick overview. Um, obviously, Elmo, I consider you to be a rock star. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, 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 I'm glad you have low standards. <laughs> <laughs> oh god i think this is the point where we should just like i should just hit the click button and say okay the interview the interview has started at this point oh that's great okay so for everyone who is logging on right now who is watching this on youtube anyone who is seeing this in the future merry christmas and welcome my a, per, a rock star to me mr elmo shropshire Dr. <laughs> Dr. Elmo himself. So now it, it's so funny. Once I get into the once I get into the, the the interview mode, it's like well everything like leaves me, and I'm just like getting so excited to be able to see you again. You know, um, how's everything been going throughout you know everything's COVID in, in California? As well as possible, like like you know with the situation we're in, uh, I miss playing a lot. Because even when I'm not playing at Christmas, I like to play with friends. But a lot of our friends in California are afraid that they might catch it. And so uh, pretty much I'm just practicing and playing on my own these days at home. Really? So you have an intense, pre you have an intense practice schedule now? Is that, uh, is that what I'm hearing? Well, I'm kind of going back. You know, when you're playing with other people, you always have to stay up on their songs and do all that kind of stuff. But now... I'm pretty much just going back and trying to learn how to read chord charts and read music and do the stuff that you never want to take time to do otherwise. Yeah, it, it's so funny too. And and I love when we were, you know, it's so funny because you came up to me at one of the shows like asking me if I did guitar lessons. Right? Yeah. You, remember, you remember that? And it, it, I laughed so hard at that because you've made a career off of the, the best three chords that exist. <laughs> you know what I mean? So, like, you don't need any other guitar lessons. <laughs> Those are the only three I still know. <laughs> hey, you know a B7 too, right? <laughs> you still been throwing that. You throw that one in there, and then there's the key change. Oh man, and and now, so last year, right? What was yeah. it? Was last year when we had done? the Holiday Express over here, and we had done the Count Basie shows and everything. Was that 40 years of Grandma Got Run Over by a Reindeer? It was, yes. Yeah. Wow. So... In 1979. And was... Now, was it released in 79? Or there was like... Was there not a... Was there a gap a couple of years where it wasn't sold? Well, d definitely. Uh, I recorded it in 79. At the time, I was working as a veterinarian. And I just recorded it as a gag gift for some of my friends. So I gave a few friends uh, a 45 RPM record of it, you know, just so they would think it was funny. And one of them took it to a radio station. The radio station started playing it. A whole bunch of people called in and said, stop playing that song, we hate it. And <laughs> grandma gets killed at Christmas. Oh my God. And, and so there was, a, and what, what did you have to do? You had to press like a minimum amount or something like that, right? We, we pressed 500 and I thought probably by now I'd still have 490 <laughs> in my garage. <laughs> do you have any of them? I have one. Really? I had to buy that one from someone who bought it from me. <laughs> <laughs> Oh my God! And and of all the songs, right? Of all the songs, of all the Christmas songs to ever exist, I think you can, we can go on record saying that yours is probably one of the most ridiculous, right? It's one of the it's it's one of the it's it's one of the most over the top Christmas songs, right? You know, all the other ones, mommy's you know, mommy's kissing Santa Claus, they're romantic. All I want for Christmas is you. Grandma got run over by a reindeer. <laughs> exactly. And now, the so I think it's very important to note because this is why I consider you such a rock star. My one of my dreams before I had gotten the chance to play with you 
was that once I heard what a, a, a diamond selling artist is, I was obsessed with the idea of, of diamond level sales when it comes to an album, right? Yeah. And, and when you think about, when, for those of you who don't know who are watching this, there is gold, there's gold record, there's yeah. platinum record, and platinum record is a million copies. Yeah. Diamond diamond records are ten million. <laughs> I know. Diamond records are ten million, and I always said to myself that if I ever got the chance to play with a diamond selling artist, that would be that would be a staple in my career, and I'd be very proud of that. And one day at Count Basie Theater, you and I were in a group of people, and someone had asked you what how many records grandma got run over by a reindeer sold and you had turned around so humbly and said i don't know somewhere around 12 million <laughs> and it clicked in my brain <laughs> right. you are like you are a diamond selling artist elmo <laughs> right like what um who did who did that who did Grandma Got Run Over by a Reindeer beat out on the record, on the Billboard 100 that year? Uh, Bing Crosby's White Christmas. First time ever. Wow! <laughs> and, and did it also, I think I heard a rumor that it also beat out Michael Jackson for two weeks? Well, uh, in 1984, we were, uh, uh, Michael and I were both on the same record label, Epic Records. And for the month of December in 1984, uh, Grandma got run over by a reindeer, so sold more copies than Michael Jackson's throat just for that month. Just still, <laughs> I, do you? I love. I love when we have these conversations when we're like doing the Holiday Express and we're talking about these things because you're so relaxed. Like, oh yeah, it only it only sold it out for one month, but you sold you outsold Michael Jackson. <laughs> You know, it's it's one of my my favorite things to tell people because, you know, you think about it, it's, you know, it's the Beatles, Led Zeppelin, Michael Jackson, Elmo Shropshire. <laughs> <laughs> That's great company for me to be in. <laughs> but those are the those are the people who are considered who who are talked about when you reference when anyone references diamond selling artists, isn't it? Well, I'm not sure if they always include my name in there, Jimmy. Uh, <laughs> don't worry, don't worry, don't worry. I always, I always remind them. <laughs> and it, it, it's just, it's such a huge benchmark. When did you realize, when did you specifically realize, did you ever know that before we had talked about it? Did you know that that was your record, your sales status? I, I never thought about it that much um, because it came and starts and stops. Uh, we first, you know, like we first sold about 300 copies in San Francisco, and then I didn't press any more in the second year. Uh, one radio station started taping it to all the other ones, and I was still working as a veterinarian. And suddenly, in uh, 1980, the song started everyone started playing the song again and uh they wanted to know if i had any records to sell and i said no i sold them all last year <laughs> and, uh, and that was that you know, oh that my god and then of course we didn't so the following year is when i started pressing some records in hopes of selling them you know when if it, if it came back the next year that's amazing. And, and anyone that I bring this up to, everyone has a story about grandma got run over by a reindeer. You know, and it's, and it's all these people who, you know, uh, uh, friends and family who were saying, you know, I have a lot of family in construction and they'll be like, oh yeah, I remember when we were on this job site and that was the first time I heard grandma got run over by a reindeer and, and things like that. And everyone has a different kind of story about the first time they heard it, you know, and, and for my family, some of them might have been in their 20s or 30s but you when you recorded that song you were 40 uh, probably maybe yeah 40 40 years old so you had already at this point been living now i guess it's a, a 
at this point, it's a good thing to mention that you I've were already done all the self-destructing things before. <laughs> <laughs> You're already you already trashed all your hotel rooms. <laughs> Oh my God! Breaking into breaking into Santa's workshop, right? The, um, <laughs> so, so if you had already been, you had already had an established career before yes. that as a veterinarian. Yes. Was were you ever planning on music on your music career taking off? Was that a dream, or was it just something you did for fun? No, I was uh, I was a banjo player in a bluegrass band, and uh, I just did it as a hobby. So I never I never had any aspirations too much of playing music for a living. Uh, although although it, our bluegrass band, you know, was playing five nights a week most of the time then. Wow! On top of being a veterinarian. Yes. <laughs> And but of course, as most bluegrass bands, we were probably only making, you know, maybe twenty dollars a night each. Yeah, yeah, bluegrass. It, it seems like it'd be a niche, right? It'd be a very niche market. <laughs> it definitely is. <laughs> how many times do you get the? Uh, how many times do you get the the joke that you know you were a veterinarian helping animals that wrote a song about a reindeer killing grandma? <laughs> all the time. All the time. <laughs> I, I I know I send you guys some of the memes on occasion too. You see them pop up on the internet. Yeah. Every every now and then, you know, it's like the two deer that are in the in the car and they say, Get in loser, we're gonna go kill grandma. <laughs> it's just it's crazy how this song has transcended so many generations and even into like the internet meme culture now. Um my girlfriend just messaged me before this interview. And she goes, she goes, oh my God, I'm watching an episode of, of the show we've been watching called The Good Place. And she goes, and grandma got run over by a reindeer is in, is in this episode. And, you know, I was telling her, I was like, exactly, it's everywhere still. It was, it, I was going to say, did you know, do you, you guys still handle um, all the royal, when, when, yeah. When they use it in a movie, it's a wonderful thing, Jimmy. <laughs> yeah. That's got. That's got to be a wonderful thing. I can't imagine. <laughs> that's, it's probably been pretty nice, um, especially especially right now when you don't get a chance to play as much. Yeah, sure. Now, so, oh my God, it just it blows my mind. So, veterinarian career into into rock stardom, platinum selling artist, outsells Michael Jackson, and then now the other thing that I really love and want everyone watching this to know about is your running career. Thank you for bringing that up. <laughs> this was too boring for anyone else to bring up. How? It is not too boring for anyone to bring up, Elmo. You just keep, like, it's accomplishment after accomplishment. So now I'm probably going to mess this one up, but I want to make sure, you, you can correct me. Or I'll just ask, you know, I'll just ask you. What record do you currently hold for the for the fastest mile in your age group in California, uh, I ran. Uh, actually, it's maybe one of the fastest in the U.S. But I ran uh, seven forty one uh, last year at age eighty three. A seven forty one, a, a seven minute and forty one second mile at eighty three. Yeah. And I just want you to know, Elmo, there are so many people that are going to be watching this that are going to be so jealous of your life. <laughs> Merry, Christ Merry Christmas, anyone, everyone. This is the most interest interesting man in the world right now. So, so, I mean, obviously, you didn't just start running at 83. No, I started running pretty late in life, maybe around 60. And... Uh, that is and, late. Uh, I think when you start late, uh, it maybe bodes well for you. A lot of people who started running early and were really fast sort of burnt themselves out on it. But I started running late. And I have to tell you this, for 20 years, maybe like 15 or 20 years from, from running, I never won anything. But the great thing was is I didn't slow down 
So when I hit about 75, I started winning a lot of things, and I won a gold medal at the World Championships in Brazil. Uh, so yeah, I think 400. <laughs> hold on, hold on. I need, I need water. <laughs> hold on, hold on. Mm. Oh my God, elbow. <laughs> okay. You know, and I was just listening the other day to uh, to a podcast, and a woman was talking about how she wanted to become a ballerina at age twenty. So she looked up the she looked up who the oldest ballerina to start ever start was, yeah, and, and become successful. And she found out that the woman who had started and become the most successful latest in life had started at thirteen years old. That was considered late. Yeah. So, and a lot of people would consider your running career well past the point of where, like, where they, where anyone could start, you know? Right. <laughs> oh my God. I need to, I need to breathe right now. And so, so 60 years old, but that's a really good point though, because 60 years old, you wouldn't have torn all the ligaments, broken all the bones beforehand that a lot of younger runners in the learning phase tend to do when they're young. That's right. I think I had a pretty fresh body at 60. Apparently. That's my opinion. <laughs> <laughs> no, not anybody else's opinion. It's still, it's still pretty fresh. <laughs> oh, welcome in. Welcome in, Pam, everybody. <laughs> I, I, <declare> <laughs> I thought you were going to pull up, I thought you were going to pull up your shirt and show us your eight pack. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god I, I wouldn't be surprised at this point it would just be like you know it's eight pack abs everyone's just gonna be you're gonna be the most interesting man in the world because because you are elbow there's no doubt about this um it just so a gold medal in brazil and now what is okay i think it's very important that that it seems like a theme around everything that you've done has not been a theme of just overnight success and luck, but otherwise like a consistent schedule of these things that you love to do. I pretty much, yes. I, I think that I'm a pretty untalented person, but uh, and I have a lot of I might just keep on going, you know, something good will finally happen. It's just... <laughs> A strength in numbers, right? Just like constant, just repetition. Yeah, plan B is repeat plan A until it works. <laughs> but, but that's but that's the mentality when you talk when anyone talks to people, you know, when anyone talks to someone uh, with, you know, I'll say your level of success in 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 the arts or in physical feats, it always seems to be that way. That there's never a question of if it's gonna work, it's just a matter of, of, of just moving forward all the time. And so at 60 years old, when you planned to start running, like when you planned to start running, what was, what was your planning for that? Well, actually I started running uh, because of my girlfriend, Pam, who's now my wife. <laughs> I'm just chasing her. She used to run, she used to go on maybe seven or 10 or 12 mile runs and I wanted to be with her, but I couldn't run that far. So I'd run a half a mile out with her and then turn around and go back and she'd go on the rest of our run. So it was my, so in order to try and please her and try and be with her, I started running more and more. And actually my goal wasn't to be a good runner, but it was just to catch her. You were literally chasing her. Yes. Literally chasing her. You have no idea how many women are going, again, are going to be jealous about a guy like you now. <laughs> like, they're going to be, I, I'm just, I, I know that I'm going to be, you know, I'm going to hear someone be like, see, Elmo chased after Pam. Why don't you chase after me? This is what girls, this is what girls are going to be saying to their boyfriends now, you know? Wow. And, and that's, and that's what eventually turned into this running career. It did. Yes. Wow, that's amazing. And now you've been running for the same amount of time as you've been with Pam. I have, yeah. That's, that's amazing. Wow. 
And that's led to you. So it might be, you said that that record, the seven minute and 41 second mile might be the record in the country. I think it may be a, a U.S. Like last year, I think it was one of the fastest 80 yeah. all times. I, wow. Definitely for 83. And I also, last year I won the national uh, 5K cross country championship. That was like a U.S. national championship. That's unbelievable. That is unbelievable. And and what's your what's your routine right now for keeping up on those chops? Uh, I usually run three times a week. Usually run three miles on Tuesday, three on Thursday, and maybe six or eight miles on Saturday or Sunday. Wow. <laughs> I can't handle all of it. I can't handle all of it. It's, it's incredible. It's absolutely incredible. And I'm just, I'm just dumbfounded right now at, at how at, I got no words. Has it been at this point, is it easy to maintain or is it, is it still just every single time? Are you like, like dreading putting on the running shoes? No, actually, I, I absolutely love it. Here's a funny thing. I mean, if, if you have to be a runner, I guess, to be able to get this, but uh, it is like a drug. No matter if I, I can be depressed, down and out, anything, if I really run, after about the first mile and a half, I'm higher than a kite. Wow. You know, and stay that way for the rest of the day. Uh, so, you are, so you are a rock star. See, you are getting high like the rest of them. <laughs> yeah yeah i know yeah very different and hence why you've been able to have such a long sustained career at this point right you pick the you pick the right drugs elmo wow and and you know i love i love when you know uh tim McLuhan when he brings that up on stage all because he's he was an avid runner as well and it's it's always such a great moment, always hearing like you know that, those little tidbits that he brings up on stage about your your running accomplishments. I love them, man. I think they're the coolest thing. And I think yeah. that might be at this. It's just it's it's very impressive how how much consistency that you that you tend to have, where it's just you just keep plugging away at and at it and keep getting better. And and now recently with COVID, obviously, I'm sure the running is like the competitive running has slowed down. Yes, I. Uh... For the first, usually I run maybe 25 or 30 races a year. And- uh, Wow. And, uh, and that's what taking off in December, every December. But uh, this year there haven't been any races at all until last Sunday and they had a race here where it was a staggered start where people didn't all gather up together to run. But, uh, you know, they had a couple of people would start and then a couple more every five seconds. So oh, race like that! It was wonderful. Was it? Really it did ended up pretty well. I I had I had the fastest time I've had since I turned eighty. That was four years ago, and I think it was because I haven't been running hard this year, and uh, I think my body was well rested, and so I had a really good time. Yeah, I guess so, right? Sometimes, sometimes you get lucky with that. We forget how important it is to rest in between, right? You get lucky, you yeah. think it's luck, right? Where you, but it just so happens that you have the skills and you're well rested for it, right? Yeah, for sure. Um, that's amazing. That's absolutely amazing. I, I'm just, again, I am always, I tell people the stories about, about you all the time because I think they're, I think it, you're just such a prime example of, of just keep going. You know, and just and keep up on it. You're you're practicing guitar now. You're learning. You know, you're learning more on guitar. Um, I, I'm, yeah, it's a, you know, I was a banjo player for years, and uh, maybe about six years ago, I started playing guitar, and I absolutely love it. And I love the, that there's so much to play on guitar. Wait, pause right there. How long ago did you start playing guitar? I think about six or seven years ago. I. I was under the impression even that you've been playing guitar for since the song came out. No, uh, occasionally, like for a long time, I had other guitar players play it for me all the time. And at some point I said, if I'm gonna get up and play the song, I need to learn how to play it on guitar. Yeah, that, that would help. <laughs> <laughs> 
<laughs> Wait, so, so did you go, to, please tell me you went to a guitar teacher and said, like, I need to learn how to play Grandma Got Run Over by a Reindeer. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> and if someone brought that up to me, if someone at at 70, let's say 76 years old, maybe roughly, you know, 78 <laughs> years old, came in and goes yeah. to me, professionally like at my at the studio i teach at or here at this at this studio if they came in and said hey my you know i want to learn how to play guitar okay cool yeah i only need to learn how to play grandma got run over by a reindeer i would have so many questions <laughs> i would have so many questions for them and and you possessed the ultimate answer like okay well why do you want to learn that song elmo because you because you wrote it because you performed it <laughs> <laughs> oh how i only wish i had come to you to learn it. <laughs> that would be like a heavy metal version <laughs> if you came to me to learn it you know you know so did you did you go to a teacher to learn your song i i did yeah i i well you know, I could play a G, C, and D chord. Unfortunately, the grandma song is an E. <laughs> oh my God, that's that section I need to like cut out of this and put it on my social media. <laughs> I knew how to play a G, C, and a D, but unfortunately, the song's an E. <laughs> oh, that's great. Wow. And so you've been playing for six or seven years now at this point. That's an. Obviously, you know, obviously you're doing pretty well and you have old faithful sitting next to you right now the uh, the guitar of choice, right? I do. Yeah. Yeah. What um yeah, this, this That's like a, This is the reindeer guitar. You can see. Oh, wow. I never even noticed it. Now, that's yep. that's amazing cuz this is like to me when I you know whenever I see you, this guitar is with you always. Yeah. What what is it? It's well, it's a it's a custom made guitar, made really? by Lane Horse Instruments, and uh, and actually he put a beautiful reindeer on it. I see that. That's amazing. Can you turn it just a little bit? There you go. Oh, perfect, right there. Oh my God. Yeah, I didn't notice that. I've never. I always see you playing it, and I always see it on its side, so I never noticed the reindeer. That's amazing. Wow, yeah. wonderful. And I wanted a I wanted a small guitar. Because I couldn't get my elbow around one of these big dreadnoughts. I, I can't. I can't even do it. I can't even. I, what was that? I know you're not a fan of big acoustic guitars. <laughs> it's so funny. There's so I get I get messages all the time about like people saying why do you hate acoustic guitars so much? And it's so funny that you brought that up right now. Um, I might be doing I might have to get one soon. I might have to get an acoustic guitar soon. So, we'll see if there's going to be a video on this channel that we're on right now if uh if, of me trying to find my own perfect acoustic guitar. We'll see. I don't know. I found I found an acoustic guitar that's a flying V. Yeah. So oh, I found one. I, I know. Is it, is it a deep body one? It's not very deep. It's kind of it's kind of thin, you know. It's not it's not super thin, but it's not super thick. But it's a flying V, and so I might. That seems like it's right up my uh, right up my alley, you know. So we'll uh, so we'll see what ends up happening with that one. But man, just I'm just shocked, and I'm I'm so happy that we get to you know that we get to play together most of the time. Um, I'm really bummed out that we, you know, uh, Pam had said to me last year when we were we were playing uh, here in Jersey about you know uh, prospective show in Vegas, and we were talking about about me coming out there and having you know having to, <laughs> I know we were we were talking about it. And I'm really bummed out about it. You know, would have been great to have. Oh my goodness, if I could have you as my guitarist, I never have to take another guitar. <laughs> <laughs> or, or they would just be free backstage, you know. That's that's all. That's, that's all. That's all, they, that's all they come. That's all it comes down to. Yeah, believe me. Don't worry about that. I got you, man. Well, uh, we'll have to do these more often. Just like you get you get you some lessons in the, in the meantime, you know. Yeah. Wow. So now, as as far as advice, I don't know how often you may get this question or not. But for anyone in the realm of pursuing a career like becoming a veterinarian and 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 be, or becoming, you know, 
you know, playing music, playing in a band, anyone who is, uh, who's trying to pursue a physical fitness goal, right? Yes. Any advice to those people? I know it sounds like kind of cliche, but I think it's super important. You know, I think you're a great example of that. So do you have any advice for those people? Yeah, absolutely. Well, yeah, try to be consistent. Try to love what you're doing. I think, uh, especially in music, uh, there was a, there was always a time in music when uh, myself and many people around me wanted to make it big right away. And uh, if they didn't, they quit and got a day job. I mean, fortunately for me, I already had a day job. <laughs> yeah, I, I guess. Easier. But uh, but still in all, there was a time when I played music for a living, you know, b before the grandma song was really big. And uh, just consistently stay after it. And, uh, and you have to love doing what you're doing. Um, I believe that, uh, especially for musicians, uh, if you get to a certain point where you're playing in a big club or a big place, there's going to be a time when you can't, when you're going to have to come down a little bit. And when that happens, enjoy the music and embrace it. And if you have to play at a pizza parlor for 20 bucks, you're still playing. That's the thing about it. That's, That's the key, right? Yeah. You should still uh, doing your art, or, you know, however good your art may be at that point. That's a great piece of advice because I was on a tour one time and um, one of the guitar techs on one of the tours that we were on, I think it was someone who had helped us out at one of the shows, they had, they had worked with a band that we had known pretty well who hit it pretty big and then they, this band had disappeared and we asked him, oh, what happened to this band that you used to work with that was getting really big? He goes, you know what? They had a slight dip in their career and they wouldn't give up the tour bus to go back in a van, you know, and when that dip came, they couldn't handle the dip and they broke up because they could no longer be the be the rock star. You know, they just kind of gave up, yeah. you know, and right. and that's interesting, like, because if you love it that much, in theory, if you really love it that much and love what you're doing, no matter what it is, you'll take those dips, right? Yeah. And, and you can. You can always get by, and and I, you know, my people who really love it, always come through. Great in one way or another, like you may not get rich, but you, but you're still much richer than someone who doesn't play music at all. Who would really yeah. be able to play like you? I mean, even that's one, um, that's one type of richness that you can have. Absolutely. Wow, Elmo. <laughs> I think, I think at this point is the perfect time to, to, uh, to say thank you for coming on and doing this. We well, thank you so much, Jimmy. We miss you so much on the Jersey Shore right now. At this point, we'd already be a couple shows into the Holiday Express. For anyone who's listening or watching this who hasn't who hasn't quite understood what Holiday Express is. If you go to Holiday Express, I think it's .org, I'll put the link below in this video to explain uh, the nonprofit organization, Holiday Express, that plays, we play shows for, um, you know, we play shows at uh, soup kitchens and at, uh, where else, Alma, where do we play? We play at uh, drug uh, rehabs. For people with special needs. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. Um, we, and, and it's a wonderful thing. I don't know if anyone could see, like, they put on concerts with some of the best musicians around, including yourself, Jimmy. <laughs> no way, no way. That's that's the funniest thing. I remember I remember one day like <laughs> There was there was there was a there was a, a couple days during that where where it had been like we played together last year, you and I then it went to the next day, I think it was with, um, like, I think Bobby Bandiero was on a show. And then the next, and then the next day was uh, the bass player Graham Maybe from, uh, from Joe Jackson's band. And yeah. I just remember thinking in those three days, like, I don't deserve to be here right now with all these, with all these incredible people, you know? 
And and I'm so thankful for that. And unfortunately, this year, um, you know, I really wish we were able to do some sort of the show with Holiday Express with all of us. Um, I wish you guys were coming out here again. Um, this means a lot to me that you did this. And for all the people that, you know, that are getting hit pretty hard right now this holiday season with COVID. And I think it's really important. Um, I think it's really important that you did this because, you know, this, just like grandma got run over by a reindeer, just like the song, you know, that brought me and many, many people decades of happiness at Christmas time, just so you know. Um, just like that, I think, you know, Holiday Express does that. And I hope that this interview with you reaches those same people that need to get in the holiday spirit more than ever. So thank you, man. What was that? I'm sure it will, Jim. I'm, I'm sure it will, man. Well, I think at this point we can, uh, you know, I'm just going to say thank you again, Elmo. And, uh, and for everyone watching, this is the Working Class Musician. Ladies and gentlemen, this has been Mr. Elmo Shropshire, Dr. Elmo, Grandma Got Run Over by a Reindeer, the real Working Class Musician himself. <laughs> thank you so much, Jim. Oh, oh, thank you. Oh, thank you, man. I will be talking to you very soon. Thank you so much. Look forward to it.